Honoring its namesake, a stealthy M56 Scorpion approached its prey, ready to strike. Amidst the dense jungle, the agile and compact tank destroyer was accompanied by other tanks, airdropped to support military operations in the Vietnamese countryside. With its compact frame and devastating 90mm cannon, the Scorpion and its crew of four were a force to be reckoned with. Its lightweight construction allowed for swift maneuverability through the unforgiving terrain, making it a formidable adversary when traversing roads at almost 50 kilometers per hour. Soon, the roar of one Scorpion signaled the battle had begun. Seconds later, the paratroopers assaulted the enemy positions, and the lethal 90mm guns tore apart North Vietnamese positions. The guns were so powerful that seven-ton tanks were lifted three feet in the middle of a cloud of smoke and dust. The enemy, bewildered and struggling to react due to the tremendous volume of fire, began to retreat. Unfortunately, their way out was abruptly cut off by the swift maneuvers of other scorpions that had encircled the perimeter. It was time for the light tank to show its tactics, hit and move, constantly disorienting the enemy. During World War II, all significant armies experimented with light tank designs to support ground operations. In the case of the United States Army, the top brass envisioned airborne light tanks that could be deployed alongside American paratroopers to enhance their firepower, especially regarding anti-tank ordnance. The Army knew German panzers, particularly the Panther, Tiger I, and King Tiger, were heavily armored and could only be taken down by powerful artillery. As a result, the U.S. introduced several light tanks, such as the M22 Locust, officially designated light tank airborne. As the name implies, the Locust was envisioned to work alongside paratroopers being airdropped over the skies of Europe. Like the parachutists, the M22 Locust could be airdropped with special canopies or deployed via gliders. The vehicle was light, weighing only 7.4 tons. It compromised armor to remain air transportable and fast, allowing it to reach up to 64 kilometers per hour. The Locust had a length of 4 meters, a width of 2.16 meters, and a height of almost 2 meters. The three-man crew had access to a 37mm M6 gun with 50 rounds, and a single 30 caliber M1919 Browning machine gun with over 2,500 rounds. Despite its ambitious design and purpose to be the ultimate companion for American airborne troops, the Locust proved futile on the battlefield. The gun was ineffective against enemy targets and heavily exposed to hostile fire. Nonetheless, the U.S. Army continued experimenting with anti-tank designs during the war to develop an airborne vehicle to assist paratroopers in Cold War conflicts. As tensions rose with the Soviet Union, the U.S. prepared new tactics for a possible conflict over Western Europe. Part of that doctrine was focused on German blitzkrieg moves that emphasized speed and quick deployments of armored units. That's where the M56 Scorpion came to life. In 1948, the Army began testing an anti-tank solution in Fort Monroe. The idea soon expanded to a self-propelled, high-velocity, small-caliber anti-tank vehicle that could be transported and deployed by air. The Army Airborne Panel quickly approved the concept and turned it to the Ordnance Department, classifying it as Project T-101 in early 1950. The Korean War broke out months later, and the program saw a new life, with the possibility of airdropping it during the conflict to assist friendly troops engaging the Communist forces. General Motors Cadillac plant in Cleveland was awarded a contract to produce two prototypes as quickly as possible to see if the vehicle could be deployed to Korea. Meanwhile, U.S. troops had to fight through enemy lines in Korea with the M41 Walker Bulldog, another light tank developed by Cadillac, which served alongside the reliable World War II-era M24 Chaffee. The T-101 tank program lasted over six years and culminated with the four-man crew self-propelled anti-tank, or SPAT, M56 Scorpion, developed alongside the SSM A-23 Dart anti-tank guided missile, or ATGM. Nevertheless, the Army was not keen on developing two anti-tank weapons and tried to merge both to save money and time. Ultimately, the military settled for the M56 Scorpion and rushed it to service in 1959. The M56 Scorpion was based on the T-101 vehicle platform and emerged as an elegant, agile predator of the battlefield. Its lightweight design 
envisioned to be airdropped alongside men from the 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions, provided the vehicle with exceptional maneuverability across varied terrains. The Airmobile self-propelled tank destroyer had a mass of 7 tons, a length of 4.55 meters, a width of 2.57 meters, and a height of 2 meters. The interior compartment housed a crew of four – commander, gunner, loader, and driver. Propelled by a Continental AOI 4025 gasoline engine generating 200 horsepower, the Scorpion raced over landscapes at over 28 miles or 45 kilometers per hour, with an approximate operational range of 140 miles. Its standout feature lay in its unique track and suspension system with a rubber metal grouser combo on lightweight tracks and pneumatic road wheels with 7.5 by 12 tires for added mobility, all supported by a torsion bar suspension, making it nimble across rough terrain. Nevertheless, the Scorpion had to trade its armor to remain light and maneuverable. It was an open vehicle with only a 5mm gun shield and brush protection bars. The crew was completely exposed to enemy fire and the environment. However, this proved less of a setback than anticipated. The M56 strategy would later mirror its namesake during its first deployment in the Vietnam War, an ambush specialist swiftly striking the enemy and seeking cover immediately, always on the move. The Scorpion was armed with a single M54 90mm gun that packed a punch and could fire at a range of up to a thousand meters with excellent accuracy and firepower. This gun, tailored specifically for the Scorpion, was the perfect asset for the fire support, assault, breaching, and anti-armor roles, as it could fire M318 armor-piercing rounds and penetrate over 190 millimeters of enemy armor. In addition, Scorpion fired high-explosive rounds to support friendly troops assaulting enemy positions or breaching fortified strongholds through direct or indirect fire. The ammunition was stored in a rack at the rear of the light tank. It carried 29 rounds in three stacked rows, two rows of 10 and one of nine. The gun was so powerful that its recoil was hard to control. Firing beyond the gun's front arc risked severe injuries to the crew, prompting safety protocols. Scorpions kicked up violently, almost three feet, often sending the vehicle's rear toward the ground. Besides damaging the car and leading to unnecessary wear, this posed a safety risk to the crews. Even more importantly, the recoil could compromise the crew's location. For instance, during patrols over Vietnam, scorpions would be easily sighted by the North Vietnamese, due to the enormous smoke and dust produced by the violent movement of the powerful gun. Nonetheless, the concealment problems could be solved by staying on the move while in combat, although this tactic depended greatly on the environment where the vehicles operated. The M56 Scorpion saw service during the Vietnam War alongside the M50 Antos light tank employed by the Marine Corps. Both were self-propelled vehicles tailored for the anti-tank role. Unlike the Scorpion, which featured one gun, the Antos was armed with six 106mm M40 recoilless rifles, manually loaded to destroy enemy armor. While the Army employed the Scorpion throughout the war, the Marines employed the Antos with the same purpose as an anti-tank destroyer. It weighed almost 9 tons and had a length of 3.83 meters, a width of 2.59 meters, and a height of 2.13 meters. Dimensions and weight were similar with both vehicles, and the same occurred with the crew. Regarding speed, the Antos and Scorpion also had similar performance, with the Antos reaching a top speed of around 48 kilometers per hour and achieving a maximum operational range of 185 kilometers. The only significant difference between the two vehicles was the armament. The six M40 recoilless rifles provided a devastating barrage against any armored vehicle, but accuracy and rate of fire were lackluster. While manually reloading, the Marines were exposed to enemy fire more than army crews aboard Scorpions, despite the latter's insufficient armor. Still, to the Antos's favor, the Marines disposed of one 30 caliber M1919 Browning machine gun to fend off enemy attackers while reloading. On the other hand, the Scorpion crew lacked any armament besides the main gun, but could fire faster than an Antos crew. In Vietnam, only the 173rd Airborne Brigade was deployed with the Scorpion. Furthermore, the Scorpion was always used in a supportive role. Ultimately, the Army was dissatisfied with the tank and began exporting it to the militaries of the Republic of South Korea, Morocco, and Spain in the early 1970s. 
the M551 Sheridan light tank steadily replaced the Scorpion as the US forces retreated from Vietnam. Although the Sheridan would eventually prove unreliable for Southeast Asia, it was better suited for anti-tank operations. As a result, US airborne troops were left without a dedicated self-propelled piece in their arsenal. When the US withdrew from the war in Asia, every Scorpion not sold overseas was scrapped or sent to military museums in the US.